Yeah, because it's it's something that we often don't see on this pathway. It sort of happens in all of our life, even pre um, awakening pathway, is that when there's a problem, we try to fix it. And when there's a negative emotion or feeling, we try to fix it. Like we're mm -hmm. taught that so much, right? So um, I don't think it's reiterated enough that uh, confusion, frustration is like, it's like lava for awakening. It's really powerful. Um, but because we're so taught that, oh, well, um, frustration isn't good. Why would frustration be good? That doesn't make any sense that I thought would be good or confusion, right? I'm supposed to, I'm trying to find my way to clarity. Why would I want to move into this confusion perspective? I'm trying to get away from that. But the sense of someone separate, the fundamental movement of it is towards pleasure and away from pain. So whatever <laughs> your mind deems is painful, which the frustration and the confusion is painful, is, uh, well, that's, that's not the way to go. That's not going to get me where I need to go. I need to find good things, good pointings. But um, it really is the, the best thing, the doorway, the, the frustration or confusion, because it's, it confuses your mind. Whenever, whenever our mind has ground to stand on, self is born of that. Mm -hmm. Identity mm -hmm. structure is born of that. So um, this is completely beyond the mind. It's what's here before the mind, and it's beyond the mind, the mind's existence. So um, the only place we know to rely on to be safe is the mind. But why would we want mm -hmm. to be safe when the whole idea of awakening is really the end of, you could say, the death of the one that is looking for safety, the one that's looking to hold on? It's the end of that. That's the whole point. You can't, uh, you know, I know some spiritual teachings teach like a big self, you know, and then there's mm -hmm. a small self. Like to me, mm -hmm. both of those selves are still selves and they're defeats the purpose of awakening. Awakening is to see that there's no self. And when you see that there's no self, we, we often think from the mind that then there's something else to rely on, that there's something fundamental here that we can sort of hang our hats on or stand from. That defeats the purpose too, because only that subject object construct can exist in the mind. In actual reality, it doesn't exist. There isn't two things. There isn't somewhere to stand and something to look at or know what it is. So this is uh, when people, when you hear people say, well, I don't really know what's here. Like, I don't know what this is. It's an unknowing, mm -hmm. it's a, a radical unknowing to the mind structure, to the uh, identity structure. It's going to feel really like, I like the analogy of like, you're on the ocean on, in a boat that's full of air and something punctures it and you're trying to tape it up you know, put some duct tape over that just so you could stay afloat. And eventually mm -hmm. you sort of let the, you let the air fizzle out and you're like this, you're like, oh man. And there's no railings there. You're just in the middle of the ocean. There's nowhere to grab onto. You're going to sink and you're going to float. And then you're going to lose your buoyancy and you're going to sink. And then you become the whole ocean. Yeah, but it's it's normal. It's common to to try to find some sort of grounding, right? To try, like mind is always trying to find footing, like to take a hold of anywhere. Like ego will hang out anywhere behind anything, behind your meditation practice, behind your everything. Your mm -hmm. your awakening, your realizations, the things you did realize. It makes everything into an experience that I had. My experience. Mm -hmm. I'm at the center of it, right? 